With the high cost of fuel, people are moving out of their large SUVs and getting into smaller cars, and you can't get much smaller than the smart car. After being sold in Europe for years, the smart car is finally available in the US. And whenever I've driven this car around, people have come up and asked, does it get 100 miles per gallon? Does it run on electricity? Is it fun, sporty to drive? Is it really cheap? Well, it turns out it's none of those things. One of the few nice surprises, the way it accommodates two people. In fact, there's plenty of room here for two adults, and the seats are very comfortable, and access is easy. But when it comes to the trunk, that's a different story. It's a two-step process to get anything in and out, and there really isn't much room back here. Small suitcase, that's about all you're gonna fit. So you'd think a tiny small car like this would be really nimble and fun to drive. Well, this is not. It's got these tiny little front tires on it, and it just has no grip. You go around the corners and it gives up really early, and it just feels sluggish. The steering doesn't have much feedback. It is a long way from a little sport car that you might think of. So when you take this thing on the highway, you feel so vulnerable, it's almost scary. Big truck goes by or a crosswind happens. You get blown about, it makes it hard to stay in your lane. Plus, just keeping up with traffic's tough with the limited power you have. And the ride, it's absolutely terrible. The impacts come through really hard. And the nose of the car always seems to be bobbing about. It makes the car almost a little nauseating to drive. But probably the worst aspect of this car is the powertrain. Power comes from a one liter motor. Well, that's not too bad if, say, it's a motorcycle, but it just does not have much power. And the transmission, that bobbing around is caused from probably the worst automatic transmission that we have ever experienced. It's actually a manual transmission that's shifted automatically, but whatever you call it, it's terrible. It makes this car a pain to drive. Visibility out the back is blocked a bit by big headrests and thick pillars. And looking out the rear, it always reminds you how small this car is when you can actually touch the rear glass. Visibility out the front, it's not too bad. Because I'm sitting up high, there's a lot of glass area around. We also like this big sunroof up top. And as for fuel economy, no, it's not electric powered. No, it doesn't get 100 miles per gallon. No, it's not a hybrid. We got 39 miles per gallon, and that was on premium fuel. To put that into perspective, the Toyota Prius gets better fuel economy on regular, and the Prius could hold five people comfortably. So while the smart car is very fuel efficient, there really is nothing else smart about it. Because with the same amount of money, you can buy yourself a Honda Fit, which is a much better car and still very fuel efficient. So if you're looking to get noticed, consider the smart, but if you want a good car, there's lots of other options.